Hey everyone, this is James from Print and Play. Now, this video isn't going to be about 3D printing, although it does relate to my arcade block series a little bit. You see, I've been getting arcade block for a long time, and I often divvy up some of the items I get that I'm not a fan of, but I know other people are going to love. And one friend in particular has been getting loot crate for almost the same amount of time, and it turns out she's actually been doing the same for me. She's been saving up a lot of the items that she gets that she knows that I would be a fan of, and the other day she handed me a bag full of them, and I thought we'd take a rundown of them and, and see what they look like. So in no particular order, I'm just going to reach over here and start pulling items away. Not even going to look at what I'm grabbing. Although I can tell you by the feel of it right off the bat, this is going to be the hoverboard from Back to the Future Part 2. I haven't cracked the box on it yet, but I am interested to see what it looks like in person. I remember when they released them, they were pretty highly sought after because they were a Loot Crate exclusive, and I haven't had the chance to see one in person. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the box off this now. So right off the bat, we have a certificate of authenticity that says, This document certifies that this one-fifth scale replica of the Back to the Future 2 hoverboard was created by Quantum Mechanics Incorporated under license from Universal Pictures exclusively for Loot Crate. So as I said, an exclusive item. The only way to get one of these is to have a friend that has Loot Crate or have one yourself. Now right off the bat, you can see in the box, it's very well protected. The detailing on it on the top is very, very nice. I can see right off the bat too, they actually put the hole in on the top where the original movie prop had the handbar that Marty McFly broke off when he stole this board from the little girl. And he ended up being able to keep it because she stole Biff's grandson's one at the end of it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. I can see that it seems to be mounted to some sort of mirror. And I see why now. I don't believe this is removable from the stand. So the reason you have the mirror, so I'll let you see it up close there first. But the reason it has the mirror, I don't know if you can tell there, is because there's a ton of detailing on the underside of this. Right off the bat, I can see that they've done electric wiring, the deckling, and the plates that allow it to hover um, are also there. And they're what's actually mounted to the stand using these pieces of probably plexiglass, I would say. And on the underneath, it just has uh, copyright 2015, Quantum Mechanics Incorporated, the usual jargon that's on the bottom of most collectibles. So that's quite well done. I like that. I'm going to enjoy putting that on my display shelf downstairs. And reaching over blindly again, we got another Loot Crate exclusive. This is going back to Terminator Genesis, which was the kind of flop Terminator movie that was released. Uh, a couple of years ago now, I would guess, 2015, 2016. And it is a molding of the endoskull from one of the Terminators, which is, I believe, the T-800. I believe that was the only one this skull was used for, which is what Arnold Schwarzenegger plays in those movies. Let's go ahead and crack the box open on this one. And we'll see what it looks like in person. Sorry if that was loud on the microphone. Okay. Well, the painting's very even on it. You can get a good look at that. It feels like it's made of a mixture of maybe plastic and foam. It's got a bit of give to it, and it is quite light. If memory serves, when this came out, the entire loot carry was kind of centered around the skull, and the box itself turned inside out and turned into a, uh, a display case for it. So that's fairly well done. There is some scuffing and stuff on it. Oh, and one of the neat things, they've done some battle scar damage uh, along here. So this is tra traditionally supposed to be sort of black, but they've gone away and scraped through so that the uh, metallic is showing through where the paint has come off. Um, kind of makes sense because in the movies, pretty much the only way you saw this is if they lost skin due to an explosion or being cut or being lit on fire, uh, I believe was the case in the original movie. So that's pretty well done. Gonna put him right there staring at the camera. Reaching over for the next item, we have, well, I'm pretty sure this is a poster. She actually told me that she saw this poster and was thinking of me, and she put it aside for me. So go ahead and crack that open and see what this is all about. So there we have the breakdown with a bit of tongue-in-cheek. Obviously, the game is contained in there, but not contained in there like that, of Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. Now, it is worth noting that Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 looked absolutely nothing like this. This is obviously an image of the arcade one. Uh, in fact, Pac-Man 
on the Atari was notorious for being one of the worst renditions of the Pac-Man game ever. It was rushed out, and a lot of the stuff that they said was a problem with it due to technical limitations of the hardware ended up being proven wrong when they released Miss Pac-Man and a Pac-Man Jr., uh, which were technically superior despite running on the same console. Uh, another thing of note, though, is that circuit board is quite accurate in terms of the way the circuit boards in a 2600 game looked. Um, having pulled apart a few of them to clean them, that's definitely the way it went. So kudos to them for being detailed like that. That's nice. I think that's definitely going to end up in a frame downstairs. Now here we have, from 2016, uh, it looks like the Loot Crate theme of 2016, of uh, sorry, July 2016, was futuristic. And it's the Live Long and Prosper hand motion from Star Trek. Now, I think they released this about the same time Leonard Nimoy passed away, and I think it might have been uh, as a tribute to him. And I think it also wasn't the only item that they released in the Loot Crate related to him. Now, as with most of the Loot Crate pins, it is well done. It's uh, metal cast. The painting on it is nice and clean. Um, the detailing work is quite nice. There's no mistaking what that is, and I really like that. That's good. Another piece of little swag. Uh, so this is an emblem patch from Galaxy Quest. Now, I don't think uh, too many Star Trek fans out there haven't seen Galaxy Quest, which is in and of itself a parody of Star Trek. Uh, it stars Tim Allen as an actor akin to William Shatner, who still stuck to his claim for fame, which was a TV show that had been cancelled like 20 years prior. And he ends up being abducted by aliens who believe he's the real McCoy, as it were, uh, in terms of being a starship captain to help them fight a war against an enemy that blew up their planet. And I believe that is the crest from the NSEA Protector. And fans don't kill me if I got the, the name of the ship wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Protector, but NSEA I'm not positive about. And yeah, that's that's quite well done. It certainly inspires a bit of the, the NASA feel to it. So they did a good job on that. Terminator seems to be a fairly popular item in these ones. Here we have... I believe this is the neural net processor from Terminator 2, although the sticker does say Terminator Genesis. But this is the chip in Terminator 2 that they pull out of Arnold Schwarzenegger's head. Um, and this is the chip that's supposed to be the learning computer. And they've actually gone as far as to craft in the switch on the bottom part here. You can see that. There's a pin sticking out there. And that's the switch that John Connor flips when he switches it from being able to learn to not being able to learn, which is what uh, allows him to continue to sort of evolve and leads to the line at the end of the movie saying he now understands why people cry. So I do, I, I do have to issue a kudos to the detailing in it. The painting on it's quite nice. There's a little imperfection right there, a little black dot, I don't know if you can see that. But overall, it's well put together. Uh, it's solid metal and it's a keychain. So I feel like I would always know my keys were in my pocket if this was attached to them. Getting down to the last two items. So the first one is just a little door hanger inspired by, or directly pulling from Ghostbusters. One says, come on in, you ugly little spud, a reference to Bill Murray's line in the movie, and that's got Slimer on the bottom. And the other side says, warning, ghost busting in progress. And as we all know, busting makes me feel good. And last but not least, I don't know why I'm not looking over, I've already seen it, but this is from Terminator 2. It's our skull friend again. So you get an idea of how the skull changed between the movies, although not very much. The overall design is pretty much identical. Um, this is almost verbatim a copy, I believe, don't quote me on it, from the Metal Cast Collector's Edition of Terminator 2, which I have somewhere. I'm pretty sure the front of it actually had this skull on it. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me too much if they either cast it or they had spares and just cut it out because it is fairly roughly cut around the edges. Um, yeah, it's a fairly nice display piece. There's no real way to hang that off a wall or attach it. They haven't included any wall hangs or anything like that. And that wraps up our rundown of some of the items of Loot Crate Past. If you've liked this video, toss me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed here yet, then please do. I'd be glad if you did. And if you have something you want me to look at or review in the future, toss it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Once again, I'm James from Print and Play. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.